Hi again. Um, I'm making lots of videos today. Um, I, I'm bringing this one up because I, uh, I sent it to you in an email. This is a probability distribution chart um, with all the really important distributions and the ones that we talk about in this class and even some extras. But uh, this sheet a friend of mine in graduate school made and uh, I just I've always kept it. I don't even have a electronic copy of it. I just have this um, paper copy. I keep making more and more copies of but I just find it really useful um, as a summary of some of the really important random variables that we talk about and everything that you'll need to know about them is summarized and definitely this is always legal to use on tests, assignments, homework, anything. So even on your upcoming tests you want to make sure to you know have a copy of this and use it. Um, you know I, I, I'm not one for memorizing so I mean these I feel very good about but some of the the aspects of them like uh, moment generating functions I, I certainly don't memorize everything so um, I think it's I think it's a really nice chart to always have handy now especially even when you do the homework in chapter 5 and chapter 6 so I'm just gonna point out that um, just already for discrete you should well be familiar with actually most of these so um, let's see uh, the first random variable we talked about I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not but uh, well even if it doesn't um, which it doesn't uh, the Bernoulli random variable was the first one we introduced I introduced period that uh, it's just you do something once and either, either it's a success or failure support is either again success or failure the probability of success or failure is between 0 and 1 uh, the mass function right there is either um, succeed or fail um, and every well you don't know moment generating function yet but the mean of a Bernoulli is P here's the variance so these are all the popular ones um, another one wow I wish that uh, I don't know I kinda wish that would work that would look kinda nice huh well uh, oh here's something well anyways I'm just wasting your time right okay well here's the other we did the first one we did this was section 5.1 was the binomial um, number and I, I really like these notes here just uh, every random variable is a story the binomial story is number of successes and n tries you do something n times how many times were you successful this is very nice foul shooting I think example um, support number of successes could be from 0 to n since you do it n times there's the mass function um, again here's the mean here's the variance geometric number of times until you get a success could be one two three here's the mass function uh, again here's the mean one over p here's the variance negative binomial number of trials till you get r successes Poisson number of events in time or space uh, hypergeometric uh, without replacement version of binomial so you're still counting number of successes but you're not replacing items back into your pool um, I rewrote it a little bit down here because I don't think of M and N as your goods and bads I usually call D is the number of defectives and then capital N minus D is the number of goods but same deal there's mean and variance uh, we didn't do a trinomial but it's very much like the binomial so actually this is a good review of chapter 5 um, here are all the density functions there's that lambda x e and a or lambda for the Poisson so you can see this is a very handy table and um, moving into chapter 6 we're, we're not going to knock off as many of these as I'd like to just for time reasons and um, again if you take another course in probability or even statistics you might see more of these um, in 7 1 if you're if you're that far that's what we started this week is the uniform random variable is just 1 over B minus A it's a really nice equally likely everyone in the interval so there's the uniform uh, yeah that, I'm sorry he put that there distribution of maximum ignorance okay it's just yeah one over a fourth one you know one I'm sorry one oh uh, that's bad a fourth a fifth it's it's just a nice flat linear function um, exponential is often um, amount of time before something happens uh, Erlang we'll see a little bit later chi-square you might have seen the statistics gamma you might have seen in uh, statistics beta Weibull um, the ones we'll do are uh, uniform, exponential, 
here's their density functions. We call them density when they're continuous. We call them mass when they're discrete, but same deal. Um, another, here's the other big one, normal. Uh, I think that's what was on, t on uh, tap for yesterday was the normal, right? Section 7-2. So 7-1 was uniform, normal 7-2. There's the density function. Make sure that you see that sigma doesn't go under the square root there. It's not very... Um, wish it was more clear. Sometimes I put sigma out front so you see it's not under that square root. Um, again, there's the mean, there's the variance. So um, this is handy for discrete and continuous. And I, yeah, I forgot, I think that if I have that last page, um, this was a chart I was working on with my advisor. This is just a, uh, which way I should rotate it? Let's see. Uh, counterclockwise, yeah. So this is just shows a relationship between random variables. There's millions and millions of random variables, right? And we only hit the big ones, but um, you can see a lot of them are based, or maybe even I don't want I don't want to say based on each other, but some of them are, you know, as n goes infinity, or if you add random variables, or if you take a limit of this, as n goes infinity. So there's lots of connections and. Uh, that's what we were trying to show relationships down here. So, um, for example, um, it was Michael that sent that email about the connection between the geometric and the negative binomial. Where is that guy? It should be down here, right? If we find one of them, where is the... I don't see the geometric. Maybe you do, but there should be a line between geometric and... Um, negative binomial. <clears throat> I thought like toward the top is more your continuous and well there's your hypergeometric up there. Oh here's now that's a negative hypergeometric Poisson binomial. Binomial goes to Poisson right I mean these are two like uh, you've already seen that binomial and Poisson how they're related. Um, why is the geometric not around here? I don't know but whenever you find it um, it should have a connection between the negative binomial. I really don't see it. Uh, I mean, obviously it's here somewhere, but I'm just not doing a very good job. So what's the point? It's kind of a cool chart. Um, I have a big poster of it in my office if you ever want to see, or if you want to buy one, I know where we can get a nice poster of this. It's kind of impressive, I, I, impressive, I think. So, oh, here's my geometric, yay. And, um, Where's my negative binomial? Oh. No, Pascal for n equals one. Maybe that's what. The, maybe that's. I didn't know. I don't know. Could Pascal be called the negative binomial in another world? And I don't know. Oh well, that's a shame, huh? Anyway, I'll uh, I'll stop this one. I think I'll make one more of a normal table and then call it quits for today. Okay.